In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the tools needed to detail the terrain mass that you had created in the last video. I'm going to go ahead and use the same height map that we had shown you in the last video. And the first thing that we're going to test out is what's called the flatten brush. To get there, go up to the environment tab in the roll-up bar and click on modify. And you'll see the flatten button here under modify terrain. One of the first things you need to set when using the flatten brush is the height, as that is the height at which it will flatten the terrain too. There's a yellow line along the z-axis that gives you a visual indication of how high the terrain will be set to. I will just go ahead and set this up at 58 for now. Then as you notice, as I mouse around the terrain, it sinks the terrain down to that height. But it would take forever to do this giant landmass with that little brush. So we're going to increase the outside radius, which as you can see, will increase the green circle that is circling the mouse right now. That is the area in which the terrain will be affected. As you notice, as I mouse around this entire island, it affects all of the terrain that's in that circle. It allows you to do large amounts of terrain all at once. Now one thing to keep in mind when using the flatten tool and adjusting the height is that it measures the height from the sea floor rather than sea level. So if you adjust the height to say 5 or 10, you're probably not going to see it because it's still going to be submerged underwater. Now another very useful tool when detailing the terrain is the raise and lower brush. Just like the flatten tool, you can adjust the height here, except you can adjust it into the negative to lower the terrain. And as you can tell, I set it at 1 and I mouse over the terrain and click and it'll start raising the terrain here. You can adjust the height and it'll raise the terrain by large amounts at a time. Now, unlike the flatten tool, this takes the height from the terrain that you're moused over currently, not from either sea level or the sea floor. And then you also have the smooth tool, which takes the average between the highest point and the lowest point within the green circle and tries to match the terrain between it, essentially smoothing the terrain out as you can see. Uh, one way to get a more smooth result over a large amount of land is to increase the outside radius. And as you can tell, it really starts to smooth it out as I even enlarge the circle just a little bit. Now I'm going to continue to work, but I'm going to speed up the video so you can get a general idea of how one would go about detailing large amounts of terrain at once. I'm also going to take this time to point out that you need to save often. You may not see me save during these videos, trust that I am saving very often as the editor will crash on you sometimes and can't be avoided. And so you're going to be glad that you save often. While you're detailing the train, as you see that I'm doing here, you may notice slight rips or tears in the actual mesh of the terrain. You can't leave those in the final product of the level. Those have to be adjusted out. Whether you raise or lower the terrain or have to smooth it out, you have to be sure that you can get rid of those. Now, we're going to slow the video back down, and I'm going to create what's called a road, because you can actually create the terrain around a road after you place it. You go to Miscellaneous, and then down to Road. And once you have the road selected, you need to find the point in the level in which you would like to start the road, and then click. And you'll see this red line, and you can continue to click and trace the red line where you want to go, and this will be the start of your road. Now, each time that you place a waypoint for the road, that will allow you to create a bend in the road, either going left or right, or up or down. And I'll show you why here in a minute, why it's important to create waypoints vertically, as well as for horizontal bends. Now, go ahead and extend the road all the way out to its final point. And once you're happy where the road would end, you will double click to finish the road, and then it'll stop following your mouse. Now you probably noticed as you were creating that road that it was comprised of two different layers. You have the bottom layer which it shows the red replace me which uh, comprises of the actual material that shows the road itself. And then you have the blue mesh that's on top of it and that is the height map of the road. The more waypoints that you place on a hill the closer that you'll notice this height map follows the hill itself. And I'll show you why that's important. But first we need to go ahead and get a material on this road. To do that, you're going to look on the right-hand side inside the roll-up bar where it says MTL and it says no custom material and click on that. 
and that'll bring up the material editor. Now we're going to go quite a bit more in depth in this in some future videos, so don't worry too much for now. But go ahead and go to terrain and then to roads, and we're going to go ahead and use forest, trail, mud, dark. Now once you've got that selected, the only thing you have to do is click on the very top left button where it says assign item to selected object. And after you click that, you'll notice that the red replace me's are gone and it's actually got a material for the road itself. Now you'll notice this blue mesh is still there. In order to use that, we want to scroll down on the roll-up bar and then select Align Height Map. And this is why I said you can actually design the terrain around a road, because as you notice, the terrain moves either up or down to fit with this blue mesh that you had created. Now you'll notice at each one of these waypoints, I could have created more of these to not slice into these hills as much, but for this particular level, I'm a big fan of the cliff look, as this is going to end up being a forest level. And you'll notice as I follow the road all the way back, you can now see the blue mesh and it doesn't intersect the terrain at any given point. You also see at this end point that the material of the road fades off so it can blend better with the rest of the level. And now if you go to the road parameters, you can adjust the road width until you're happy with the actual width of the road. And that not only does that increase the blue mesh that sits on top of the road, but it also increases the actual material itself. And it's because of the road's ability to directly affect the terrain that I like to create it first before putting a lot of detail into the terrain. Now we're going to skip to a different part of the level here, and we're going to show you how to create either a pond or a lake. You're going to want to go up to Area inside of the roll-up bar, and then click on Water Volume. Now, whenever you go to click on the terrain, you're going to want to find a nice basin-like part of it so pond can actually sit in there properly. And as you click around the edge of the basin, you'll notice a red line with some blue dots being placed. You're going to want to place the red line with the blue dots all around the edge where the lake would be. And you'll also notice a black grid below it all. That's going to be where the actual surface of the water will lie. You'll notice it's sitting a little bit below where the red line and blue dots are. That allows you to actually place it the outside of the terrain technically but you'll notice how this black grid meets up with the terrain as i place it a little bit above now it doesn't have to be perfect you can place these dots pretty haphazardly but notice how as i go through i actually complete the entire circle and whenever you're done placing all these blue dots just double click on the last one and that will complete your pond now it's not going to show much of anything except for this black grid until we actually assign it a material. So just like the road, click on where it says no custom material. And once again, that'll bring up the material editor. Go ahead and click on materials and then open up ocean. And then we're going to use lake one. So go ahead and select it and then click on the assign item to selected object. As we move this out of the way, you'll notice that the lake actually has water in it now. As we click away from the lake, the black grid will go away. Every single time you create a body of water like this, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have any gaps and that this blue line actually covers the edge of the lake. If not, you will have water just floating out in the middle of nowhere and it can stand out very badly in the level. And once you're happy with your lake, go ahead and go around and finish detailing your terrain. And in the next video, I'll show you how to add color and materials to the terrain itself.